And day one, um, you know, we've worked hard and a lot of stuff showed and some guys are more ahead than others, uh, but the competition is making everybody better. Our pace of practice day one was solid, but it will increase, right? Our tempo by the way we do things will get better, um, but we're demanding it and we're getting it for the most part. Of course, with a day one, it's just not where it needs to be, but all in all, uh, some positive results. Um, I like the type of attitude that we display. You can push this team, you can push these coaches. We made sure the coaches understood that it was gonna be as or more difficult for the coaches as it is gonna be for the players. And that's a good thing, right? Nothing worse than a staff that doesn't push itself but pushes its players. So we're gonna push each other. Uh, we're gonna get the most out of each other and solid day one, looking forward to cleaning up this film and getting a meeting. So questions, please. Coach, what do you feel like you learned about the team from the summer workout program? That we're willing to work, which I think is, is critically important that our capacity for workload, our capacity for understanding and learning systems is fairly high and that there's potential for it to grow even more. That's exciting for a coach to understand that, you know what, you have a, a bunch of guys that are willing to work, that are capable of learning and that have no issues when you get after them. And when I say get after them, I mean in a positive way, with some juice now, you know, it comes with intensity, but it's all in all for the good of the team and for the good of each individual. Expect? Yeah, and do they have nerves also? I don't, I'm not so concerned that the plays are perfect, but the way we do things have got to be at a high level. Like running on and off the field have to be full throttle. How you finish a play has to be full throttle. Um, if it's a walkthrough, there shouldn't be a ball on the ground. You saw it happen earlier and we had to blow it up and start all over again. So the way we do things, as opposed to the result of that particular period, that particular play, is what's really important. You know, if we are uh, if we're in our one-on-one -on -one drill, our five-on-four pass drill, and we're retracing and chasing the ball, that once that whistle is blown or once that ball is gone, that everyone puts a foot in the ground and it's a full-speed sprint to the football. Not two yards before it, not a yard from it, but all the way through it so that we can get in just really good practice habits because, you know, our practice and preparation will become our game reality. All right, notice on the roster there's, there's no number one, there's no number 26. Um, well, number one, you got to earn it, you know, and it's, it's, you know, I think uh, some guys have asked for it, and I do not disrespect anyone in not awarding them a number, but if you're going to wear that, you better be the baddest son of a gun, you know, on the planet, okay? And I think we have guys that can work themselves there, and it's, if someone gets to that point, then, you know, maybe it's a consideration. Uh, 26, one person asked for it and just felt it wasn't, uh, quite the level it needed to be to, to wear that number the way it should be worn. Do you think numbers should be retired? I don't know if numbers should be retired in general. They should be honored. I do believe that because if you start retiring numbers at the University of Miami, you could retire 40 plus numbers in a hurry. And then everybody's wearing, you know, 65 and then you got everybody pissed off at me, right? And so um, I think uh, you have to honor every number and every jersey that you wear. Um, I think we'll start with that. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Well, you want to do it after? No, just let me change channels in my head real quick. Okay, go ahead, buddy. Bueno, bastante energía. De verdad que físicamente estamos preparados para practicar eh, con, en varios momentos intensos. Hemos mejorado eh, físicamente, mentalmente. Creemos que vamos a tener un, un equipo bastante poderoso, pero por el primer día bastante bien. Uh. Man, talk about sweating. Can I translate that? Oh, man, you know, I just want to make sure I don't, uh, the rest of the family doesn't call me later for some, for un disparate, as they say in Spanish. But, um, yeah, go ahead. Come on. Good seeing some of the injured guys that we didn't see in the Oh, man. No doubt, Chris. No doubt. You know, you saw the uh, spring ball at certain positions. It was, we were very thin. And today, those positions happen to be pretty thick. So you saw our racks were racks of six multiple rotations. Um, we two-spotted a, a couple different periods to make sure everybody got a certain amount of reps and it just enhances competition, it really does. And then ironically, temporarily, we're a little bit thinner in a couple other spots, which we should be okay in a couple of weeks. But all in all, I think the guys that had to rotate, rotated with intensity, with intentionality, with purpose, and did a good job. And the guys that 
where we were a little bit thinned out. They practiced hard. They understood that maybe they had to double up a couple times to make sure that we got quality work. So uh, that part of it was was good. And in particular, you've talked so much about improving the run game. Yes, sir. Uh, the individuals you have on the roster, you've got to be excited about seeing this position battle shake out. In the yeah, we are. We are. I think. It's important for us to understand the concept. We all, a lot of us were here, right, when that running back room was just throttling people, and it was a combination of guys, and they were all a little bit different the way they ran the ball. And, you know, watching, it was great to see Don Chaney today run with full speed, right, ones and twos. Same thing with, you know, with uh, Rooster. Same thing with Henry Parrish. Same thing with Stad. Same thing with Trevante. These guys are really talented guys. And the way that we run the ball, the way that we run our offense, the tempo with which we go with, there's going to be enough touches for the guys in that room. So we just have to keep working at the details that go with playing running back. It's not just running the ball. It's understanding how we block, right? How we protect, you know, all the things that are tied into the passing game, the distribution, and the routes that are tied into what we do in the backfield. So all in all, just a lot of progress today. Let's do a couple Coach, more from Coach and put it just out. Coach, what was the message that you gave to the players that you could share after your practice run? The message out there? Uh, you know, a lot of that I like to keep private because I think that's important. And I think the best part of camp is that you can have messaging and you can do things that stay in-house. A lot of it was similar to what we talked about earlier about it being the way you do things. Running off the field means running all the way off the field. Finishing a play means truly finishing a play. But you really, all these weights and all these, these sprints we did in the summertime, unless you know exactly what you're doing, how to do it, and why we're doing it that way, you can't put that to good use, right? So this is a time where we've cut out the outside world. There are no distractions. We could really dive into every, every ounce, every bit of the playbook and learn it so well that we could play to the best of our ability. So that's obviously a huge component. And I think that has hit home. I think Inky Johnson talking to the team and his message about losing sensitivity and in no way, shape or form letting entitlement settle into your room. And when I say the room, I'm talking about the locker room. And that includes the staff. As long as there's zero entitlement um, and guys are willing to work, we're always going to make progress. Last question for Coach. Kobe Young. Okay. okay. Kobe yeah. Young, how have you seen him? He didn't participate in the spring, but mm -hmm. how has he looked? He's got good size. Big, fast, physical, great hands, hard worker. Because like you said, he wasn't here in the spring. He joined us very late uh, in summer conditioning, and he, he attacked it now. There are moments that it, it'd be hard for anyone to, uh, no matter if they were training hard or not, to jump into our summer program and complete those last two or three weeks. It's where you peak, right? It's the final part of it. It's the biggest challenge, and he was outstanding. So it's great to have him here. He's a quick learner, quick study. So excited for him and the future. All right, we saw those uh, cold rooms, I guess. Um, Camus on us, I guess, for guys to kind of recover quickly. Mm -hmm. I know old school came to say, what are you doing? It shouldn't be cold out there, but can you tell us just how it's used? And Right. Well, that has nothing to do with anything but recovering. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, the way we practice is a different level, and there are times after practice where you want to bring your core temperature down. I'd love to explain all the science that goes with it. I'm sure I would bore you guys to death, so I'm not going to do that. But uh, it's something that we use at a couple different spots. It's really good in helping our guys recover. And the way we practice and the way we're going to practice, every ounce of recovery and uh, every ounce of every advantage we could gain, we're going to do. You know, we have a saying because we go really hard. It's easy to be tough with somebody else's body, right? Go hard, practice hard, go lights out, and then when it's time to shut down the engines and cool them down and recover them, do that as well. Coach, what is, what is the approach to question. your players and how they deal with social media? Real simple. It's when you when you are on social media, um, whatever you do might be a reflection of you, but it affects all of us. Right. So everything you do on there is appropriate. And, you know, it's not that hard. It's not that difficult. We had a meeting yesterday on policies and procedures. And I'll go back to what Coach uh, Johnson, Coach Erickson, my high school coach, Coach Dennis Lavelle would say. If we have to build a book this thick of policies and procedures, we probably have the wrong group of guys in the building. OK, so responsibility, uh, the image, you know, you're representing all of us. So you never comes off. And every action, every choice, and every decision has to be made with the you at the forefront.